Hello everyone and welcome back to O'Neill Cylinder Construction in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 with Realism Overhaul where I continue to construct an extremely large station or settlement really in space 1.2 kilometers in length 150 meters in radius and we are still on the initial set of plates and plate tubes and stuff like that there are supposed to be six sets but there's the first set of plate tubes that I continue to construct I said in the previous video that I would do some of this off camera uh, but as it turns out some of the views were sort of nice so I decided to share them I also decided to start using docking alignment uh, indicator because Frankly, I need all the help docking these huge things as I can get. Even these simple tubes are really heavy. And uh, just getting a sense of where things need to be is difficult because of the large radius of the base plate, 150 meters in radius. So because we don't get an accurate read of the position of things in Kerbal Space Program when they are furred and 200 meters out, that makes things difficult. So anyway, some more docking here. Now in daylight, each of these has a controller in. They weren't initially supposed to have controllers in or independent RCS, but using tugs for all of it turned out to be way too time consuming, especially given the fact that we will ultimately in total have 36 of these, well, actually um, 72 of these tubes because I'm pairing them up so, yeah, that's a lot of docking procedures and huge docking procedures. These tubes are, what, 120 to 140 tons, depending on how much fuel is left in them. So there we are, five of them on. And then finally, I go back and get the sixth. And once the sixth tube is on, we can then proceed sending up the huge plates the heaviest components of the station actually at 1,700 tons apiece. So here I dock uh, the two together, take it off of the support structure. I wanted to deorbit the support structure. It does have a controller and RCS on it, but the RCS was taking too long. So I decided to just tracking station, get rid of it. It did have enough Delta V to deorbit, but I just didn't have enough time. I carefully made sure that things did not actually bump into things this time uh, but that one was a close call right there some maneuvering was necessary and here we go docking it all together and there we go hopefully i'll send kerbals to uh, explode the surplus parts that we don't need because we've got solar panels and stuff like that on all of these core tubes but that'll be for later for now, the attempts to launch the big plates. Now we have a total of 36 plates that we're going to have to launch. This is the very first one, but once I figure out exactly how we're going to launch them with this one, then I can just do the same thing over and over and over again. This is the big stumbling block. You'll notice that there's something added to our station carrier launcher, and those are the five segment SRBs from SLS. Uh, I decided to slap those on because we were not going to be able to get to orbit without it as it turns out. Size-wise, the physical size of the plates uh, are meant for the station carrier. The mass of the plates, however, I tried my best to calculate based on an aluminum structure and they are too heavy for a station carrier because it is an SSTO. So. I tried to add boosters, they sort of exploded there when they decoupled, but didn't actually kill the launcher this time. Uh, and, well, we're not getting to orbit. And we do not have enough Delta V here with the eight uh, SLS SRBs. So I decided to put bigger SRBs and more of them. So here we have AJ-260s. These are from my Surestrut engine pack. They are a replica of the real life largest solid rocket boosters ever tested. We have eight lighting on the ground and then eight lighting in mid-air. So those are at the top there above the first eight. And well, well, it was more promising in general, but there's lots of issues here. There's trajectory issues, right? Every change in the initial amount of thrust means that our trajectory has to be a little bit different. And this thing is super draggy. The main problem with actually launching one of these plates is probably not the mass, but the fact that far as reading an excessive amount of drag 
because the plates are like flat and it's sort of ignoring the conical thing on top the actual launcher it seems to be just treating these things like horrible flat objects basically we're launching a flat object as far as far as concerned at least looking at the drag coefficient um, so that happens with the plate tubes and stuff like that that did not happen uh, we had a lower drag coefficient with those we have a much higher one with the plate so the first attempt didn't quite work out because the trajectory and so here's the second attempt i go steeper as you can see trying to limit the throttle uh, based on the drag that we see in far there it's really high basically a drag coefficient of one is already a flat object so off go the first set, the second set, keep powering us. There's just a way to get extra delta V here. Normally boosters are used to increase your thrust weight ratio, but we we're actually trying to add delta V here. And well, spoiler alert, it's not going to be good enough. Again, at least they didn't actually kill the station carrier. Some booster separations have killed the station carrier, that's why I mention it. Anyway, I can calculate from the remaining delta V that we can't get it. So, next step up, I put the boosters from the Monument Rocket. These boosters, uh, each booster has four RD-270 engines. Uh, these burn UDMH and NTO, they're from the Soviet Union. Uh, All together, that means that currently we have 64 of those RD-270 engines on the boosters. And so that's a lot of power. In fact, that means that the station carrier has the same amount of power and the same launch mass as the monument launcher. I think I'm morally opposed to any launcher larger than the monument launcher. I think if you can't fit it on the monument launcher, you've done something wrong. So we basically got a conical shaped monument launcher. The reason I'm not using the monument launcher from the get go for launching the plate is because the plate would look really horrible at the top of the monument launcher because the monument launcher is only 32 meters in diameter at the base but 24 meters with the second stage and so any fairing that's above 32 meters in diameter is rough and these plates would require at least a 50 meter fairing probably more in the long direction they're more than 50 meters okay there we go we have made orbit and well the problem is that i need to rendezvous and i'm using the station carrier to do the rendezvous which is probably not a brilliant idea and we had boil off so i added mli layers and tried again the mli layer is surprisingly not very heavy on this very very large station carrier i have no idea how it calculates that uh, but they're not heavy to begin with and they shouldn't be used for that but we don't have a foam option so I used them used the MI, MLI layers to simulate foam to try again and so here we go now b before anybody says of course I know that tilting the boosters out like that is not as efficient as having them fire straight down but with the body of the station carrier being what it is this is just more photogenic okay I might still ultimately consider turning them so that they're straight, but for now we'll keep them like this because it did make orbit. I don't know if the amount of delta V it had remaining when it made orbit was enough to do the rendezvous, but we would need the boil off to be controlled in order to see that. Well, off go the boosters and again we have explosions. I never seem to have enough of the separatrons for these things. We might need large solid boosters in order to separate these other enormous boosters at the rate we're going. Uh, but anyway, I think it was a sort of decoupler malfunction there. There are special uh, decoupling rockets for those boosters, but they never seem to work right. I just need to fix that part. Anyway, the station carrier continues on to orbit. It does, in fact, make orbit, but again, not with a huge amount of delta V. And no changes to this particular trajectory helped. And actually, the MLI layers didn't help on the boil off. Uh, we continued to have boil off for some reason, despite the MLI layers. And I checked that, it was reading that the MLI layers were on. So I'm going to need to do some other fixes for next time. Mainly, I need to not time warp so much. 
uh, if we could launch when the station when the cylinder is really close then then I don't have to do as much time warping and I don't have to worry about boil off so I'll probably go with that strategy uh, so a better launch window and better launch insertion would be the good way to go but maybe I need to straighten up the boosters there are a lot of possibilities here for now, I have not been able to get the first plate over to the O'Neill cylinder, and this has been the progress report on that struggle. Incidentally, for the docking, the plates do have their own RCS thrusters and hydrazine fuel, but it's not enough to actually do the rendezvous as far as I can tell. So, for now, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.